So if you're a longtime follower of the channel, you know that I like to do drone tracking on my bike, or I'm using drones, various kind of tracking technology to follow me while I'm riding my bike, either on-road, off-road, all that kind of stuff over the last almost decade, in fact. Uh, but one of the challenges in the last couple of years is that DJI has gone away from being able to use your phone as the controller for their drones entirely. Instead, you have to use the remote control with your phone or just the remote control itself. Uh, now, there are some other drone companies like Scadio that has this remote that solves it because it's really small and fits in her handlebar and all that kind of stuff, but not so much this. This is a pain to fix. It's something I've shown in some reviews that I've like jury rigged all sorts of crazy rubber band contraptions onto, and I've done some weird stuff over the years to make it work. But a reader pointed out recently this little remote holder, which costs like 20, 25 bucks. It's sold under like a dozen different names, but if you look at it carefully, it's all the same thing. And interestingly, it works for a lot of different products out there. So it works for the Mavic Air 2 and the Mini 2 because they're the exact same controller, but supposedly it also works on all these other remotes I have over here. So let's go ahead and get them boxed. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. I'm going to get out on the road and try it out. Uh, now, if you haven't seen my previous active tracking videos for any product out there, uh, then definitely check those out in the corner there. But the most recent one is the Mavic Air 2 versus the Skydio 2. Uh, and that one's pretty, pretty well watched at this point. So check that out there. I'm not going to focus this video on all the tracking aspects. We're going to go out and try it, of course, but uh, it's not going to be like a test of tracking. We already know how it tracks. Uh, so here's those two pieces. And then we've got the mother of all screws here. Holy cow, that's a beast of a screw. And that's it. Like, there's not much to this. Pretty straightforward right there. Uh, so we got, this looks like the clamp that's gonna go on the controller, screw, and this goes on our bike. I like it, simple, straightforward. I noticed we're using GoPro mounts here. That's cool, and one thing that you could potentially do is use something like this instead. Uh, so this is a K-Edge one, but there's others out there. Uh, K-Edge makes usually pretty high quality ones. Um, this is an out front metal mount. Uh, normally it'd be like this, position downwards and put the camera lower, but you can actually flip it over, which I do a lot of times, uh, and this way the camera's on top. Uh, but you could then use this by just sliding it in uh, like this. Uh, the challenge, that's a really tight fit. Um, the challenge with this, and why I probably wouldn't recommend it though, uh, while this is prettier, uh, usually these are designed for a certain load rating, and I guarantee you this is well beyond the load rating of what this is designed for. Uh, and more importantly, as one who has broken a lot of metal mounts over the years, albeit not k edge ones, but other ones, uh, usually what happens is when you get any sort of bump and vibration, that kind of repeated bump like this will eventually snap this in half. And, you don't want to do that. So by carrying the load centered on top of this, it's going to be a bit more stable. And we'll talk about that as well in a second too. You see, look, look at how thick this is, like compared to a normal mount. <laughs> this swings out. This is nice. This is all metal construction, aluminum looks like of some sort. Uh, this is really actually well made. The plastic bits there, yeah, so, so, but there we go. It's got the rubber here. So the rubber inserts, um, the only one set, uh, but you know, if these don't quite fit your handlebars, just put any piece of like rubber material you can find around uh, inside there. So let's put this, um, this first shot here. Let's see how this fits initially out of the box. Uh, definitely too big. So you can see it's way too big. Uh, the just it doesn't even come close to closing. That's why I would recommend just one of these rubber inserts. Um, okay, we're gonna have to get rid of the second rubber piece. I'm gonna see if we can make this work. Okay, so we popped it in place. It's not ideal, but whatever. Uh, and now we're gonna go and tighten this up. So there we go. Uh, again, the way they've designed this isn't super awesome. That's pretty tight though. Uh, it's close, but it's like, it's definitely designed for a smaller bike. Okay, and then that's supposed to come up. That's all it goes. Oh, that's not good at all. It doesn't rotate all the way through. Now, one thing you'll probably have noticed is on the box, it says this thing should actually rotate around, uh, sorry, like this, and close up this way, um, but it doesn't actually work. See, watch, it slides open because the pressure here is too great because this is designed too small. So you can see that like barely holds uh, and it doesn't take much for this to just simply pull up. So that's why I'm going the other way because there's no lock. So also ideally, they would have put um, a way to tighten this top. This is just round. I can't actually do anything with that. Uh, so they would use like a hex in there to be able to tighten that up. So I would say like, this was clearly not designed for a cyclist, by a cyclist, sorry. This was designed by a drone person who's never actually used bicycle parts before. Okay, so that's there. Now we take this piece here. Uh, this is the clamp onto the remote. And you see it's got these little hooks there, which is really well done up on the top. Uh, and then it goes down here. And then once we get beyond this point, it just pops into place. Ooh, it's not, it's good. It's not great though. Like that's the, the overall theme here is it's not great. Um, and then we put this up like this, and then put your phone on. And then we got this whole beastly thing that's gonna go right like that. Okay, 
And then we take the screw, the mother of all screws, and put it in. Okay, so this all set, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off for the ride out to where I'm going, uh, because that just seems like a poor idea. Leave it like this horrendous looking thing, uh, and we'll get rolling there. Okay, so we've been riding about a half an hour now, 33 minutes, and this is a spot I'm aiming to do my test at, so I'm just gonna leave this timer running. I'm gonna show you start to finish. Uh, we'll start the timer the exact second the brakes stop as to how long it takes to get this in the air, mounted, flying, and we're gonna fly until it stops following me. Simple as that. There we go. Okay. So first thing is taking out, uh, put this down for a quick second there. Take it out of my bag. So we have in here, there we go. Controller check. And drone is inside the hat. There we go. Drone out. Take off the uh, gimbal protector. There we go. And we'll get this thing started first so it can find this GPS. Go on, little buddy. Have fun. There we go. Zip it back up. Grab my phone out of my rear pocket. Phone out of the rear pocket, come on. Okay, there we go, got the phone. Now put this back on. Hey, okay. sorry, part of this is getting like clothing unstuck and stuff, so that's kind of like a reality there, right? Everyone else has to do that too, so I'm not gonna like, cut that from the time. Okay, so bike, check. Now you can see I've added my uh, little protector there, and I'll show you how this is gonna work. Uh, protector strap, something. I've added so I don't lose a darn thing. Um, so I'm gonna go into this like this, and the phone will protect it. So there we go, it goes underneath. There we go, come on, just like that, perfect. And then this snaps in place. Boom, that was quick and easy. Uh, and I'll say after 30 minutes of um, pedaling, this didn't fall off or make any jiggles or noises or anything like that. So let's open up the app. DJI Fly, I believe that's the correct one. I have a beta one too, so I just wanna make sure it's the right one. There we go, okay. This is my normal app, not the beta one. And we're ready to roll. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and get it up in the air. I'll start recording first, because I'll forget that. Do a screen recording as well. Microphone on. And we got someone coming just right behind me here, so I'm gonna wait a couple seconds. Seems like a safe thing to do, so we'll pause the timer for a second, let this guy go past. Okay, there we go, that guy has gone past. And up in the air we go. Check complete. Clear on all directions. There we go, move him over the side. He's gonna be out over there. There we go. Okay, active track. There we go. Actually, I decided I want peril after all because I don't want to deal with people out here. So now we're rolling. Okay, and we're gonna go until we can't go anymore. It's as simple as that. Come on. There we go. Now some people ask about why you can't use sport mode or why I don't use sport mode. You can see it's a little bit slow behind me. And the reason is simple. There's no obstacle avoidance in sport mode. So if I do that, I run the risk of it hitting a tree or whatever else. And I don't entirely want that. Um, now, right now there's nothing where it is out in the water. So I could in theory do that. Uh, I don't know what happens if I switch midway. Let's see, I might lose this. I'll just give it a quick second here. It is way back there. Come on, little buddy, catch up. There we go. So let's see if I go sport mode midway. Obstacle avoidance. Let's see if this will... Oh, cool, it actually stays. I've never tried it halfway. See what happens. But that gives me more... There we go. Let's see, let's take the pace up a bit. Oh, as for the mount, by the way, that's the whole point of this entire darn thing. Uh, zero vibrations, which is great. 
zero bumps. It's solid, I'm really liking it actually. I'm not sure if I'm ballsy enough to bring it um, like mountain biking. I think it'd be fail. I'm gonna increase some altitude here. I don't like. And I lost it. Okay, so one of the nice things though with this remote compared to how I usually deal with it is that since the controls are right here, I don't have to go find anything. Like, it's great. Now, the part I'm looking for up here on the mount, by the way, is a little section of like brick type stuff. And you'll hear it when we click into it. It's just not awesome is the best way of describing it. Uh, and so I'm hoping we don't lose the mount in that. So, here comes the uh, cobbly stuff, bricks. Yeah, it's pretty quiet. Oh, there we go. The vibrations are strong there. Oh, I'm taking this slow initially. I don't really trust it. Nope, go with the phone. Yeah, that's not, it's not ideal here, folks. You can see that there. That, um, so the weight's too much. And RC not connected. We lost all the things. There we go. I was pissed off about this. Oh, crash warning. Oh, great. Thanks, Garmin. And my wife's gonna be pissed. Oh, good lord. Come on. Well, I'm gonna get my drone back. Okay, so a couple thoughts. I tightened the screw even more, but I mean, this is really, really tight at this point. Uh, I don't know if that'll hold it. Let's see if this will stay put this time. Yeah, this just bounces a lot. Like the forward part of this is just crazy bouncing. And I'm going like, what, three miles an hour right now? Nothing, five miles an hour. I'm going running speed right now. Uh, and you can see it's already tilting back down again. Yeah, it's just not gonna work. Let's get this back down and uh, finish up this conversation. I'm really a fan of hand catching. I know some people aren't, but just so much easier. Okay, so here's my sort of final thoughts on this whole thing. I'd say good attempt, not perfect, good, totally fine for like road usage, no issues there at all as long as the roads aren't too crazy bumpy. Uh, Off-road usage, not a chance in hell. So I decided not to give up on this thing. I decided to give it a whirl. I re redid some stuff on it. Uh, what I did basically is, is relatively simple actually. I just simply replaced this screw right here, the main screw that attaches a phone part of it, sorry, the remote part of it, um, with a GoPro screw, just a standard GoPro screw. Uh, the other screw they had there was just a piece of crap. And this one is better and I can really crank it down with a screwdriver, which the other one I couldn't. Uh, beyond that, I'm not sure if I had this differently last time, but this is how I have it now. Update here as I got back to my road bike as to why it works my mountain bike, but not my road bike. And it's kind of lost some parts. I'm not kidding. So there's this little white piece of plastic right there. There's also supposed to be one down at the bottom here. I lost it in my bag on the way mountain biking. And that's the difference. It's just the extra roughly millimeter and half, two millimeters there that makes it so this whole thing can easily close. <clears throat> and it seems relatively decent. I, instead of trying to tighten it with the bottom portion, I tighten it with the upper portion, the piece that's in between here instead, uh, until it's as tight as it could go, and then I cranked it in, and I think it's gonna stay. I hope it's gonna stay. I'm going mountain biking here, um, and I can't fly the drone here because you're not allowed to, but that's besides the point. We already know the drone follows me and all that jazz. What we wanna know is whether or not this remote will stay on the handlebars. Let's go find out. There's nothing. Well, that's looking sketchy already. But you know what though, it's staying. Like, I see where it's flexing. It's flexing mostly at the point of the phone. Um, but, like in terms of the phone keeping in there, but it is staying. Like, this little section here is just fine and dandy. I could go down this, but then I'll go back up this whole mess. So I'm gonna turn around here and do that section again. coming should be good I can see it's definitely tilting a little bit but way better than before like if I were to then reapply this to the road I think I have zero problems whatsoever uh, but I don't plan to do that I've proven it works just here so I think this thing's gonna make it into my arsenal of goodness I think it's gonna be my main way of doing road-based shots and light mountain off-road type shots uh, nothing like crazy 
rocky alpy type stuff but overall i think it's a keeper i think this is this will do donkey this will do uh not perfect but you know a single gopro screw that you invariably have around works just fine for this so with that i'm gonna get back on the trail here because uh yeah it's the place to be not gonna lie oh and don't forget to whack that like button or the subscribe button for plenty more sports technology goodness because i got stuff here we gotta talk about have a good one